Okay, so let's get into the Bard. Bardic Inspiration here is now a, a reaction. It used to be a bonus action, so you could front load people ahead of time, or you could try to dish out bonus action Bardic Inspiration dice during a fight and hope people would use them. <laughs> but now it's a reaction when someone fails a d20 test. So if someone fails, like you know they need help, you know what the roll was, you can use your reaction to expand a Bardic Inspiration die and potentially turn it into a success instead. You also cannot boost initiative with this, because you can't fail an initiative roll, you just roll it. And so technically you couldn't use this to boost initiative. Heal, healing as a reaction, you can revive someone immediately. Is what I noticed with this, because you can roll a Bardic Inspiration die as a reaction when your ally takes damage and you restore a number of hit points equal to the number rolled. I probably wouldn't use this in the middle of combat unless I had a lot of Bardic Inspiration and it was a big fight, so I just needed to be using my reaction. But when I would use this is when an ally gets reduced to zero hit points. So if they get hit by some dragon's claw and it knocks them down to zero hit points, they're gonna be knocked out. You say, nope, and you just have them remain up and you go from zero to whatever hit points you heal them. And that's the best kind of healing because the only hit point that matters is your last one. <laughs> There's no difference between a character with one hit point and 100 hit points. So as long as you can just heal them when they get down to zero, immediately keeping them up, that's great. My friend who DM'd for me, uh, RPG Storycraft, make sure to check out their YouTube channel. He did a homebrew version of Healing Word where I think it was a second level spell and it used hit dice and you cast it as a reaction when someone gets knocked down to zero. And that worked pretty well because he wanted to avoid like getting knocked out and then Healing Word bonus action bringing people back up. Just keep them up. And so doing this as a reaction I can respect that. I, th I like this design choice. Instead of them getting knocked down and get back up and make everyone think like, oh, you're dying and now you're not. Maybe you should get a lasting injury. Maybe the healing's just keeping you up and it just feels more thematic and cinematic to me. James Stewart says, as a reaction, it means they don't lose a turn if they are before you in initiative two. Yes, so if they if they got knocked down and they were before you in initiative, they would have lost a turn with the going back to the bardic inspiration healing as a reaction. But now you can prevent them from losing a turn. So overall, I think this is a big win. It it makes me more excited to play a bard. I've never played a bard. I've made bards when I was in college and I just made characters instead of doing my homework or doing taking notes in class. I know, I know. So I've made bard characters, but I've not really played one. Maybe in a one shot I did once, I don't remember. This this makes me more inclined to play it because I like the idea of being able to keep people up and at them with my bardic inspiration. Um, Mythos JK9, your allies still take the damage if you heal them with bardic inspiration. So they would drop to zero HP, go unconscious, lose concentration, fall prone, but he immediately be brought back to your healing. That is a that is an important distinction. Thank you for pointing that out. So if they were concentrating or doing something that they lose if they're incapacitated, they would lose that. So arcane spell list, and th there is some gatekeeping we mentioned before here of like what kind of spells they're gonna be learning. Instead of it being a bardic spell list, a bard spell list, the bard uses the arcane spell list and it can learn certain schools of magic. Later we're gonna see, interestingly, a good bit of spells had their school of magic changed, including a few healing spells changing to abjuration. And I imagine that's going to be because the cleric probably sticks to abjuration spells or something like that. The bard here does not get abjuration spells, but it does get this new feature to replace Song of Rest, which is Songs of Restoration. And it gives them these five spells at these levels that are healing and support based, and they always have them prepared and it doesn't count against the number of spells they can prepare. Free support spells. So if you want to play a bard, you're going to be able to do these support things and then still pick the other spells you want. Jack of all trades. This kind of bummed me out because it says you add half your proficiency bonus as normal to any ability check you make that doesn't already use your proficiency bonus. And that sounds pretty normal like it was before, but they specifically are throwing in this wording that says that uses a skill proficiency. Now what this means is bards will no longer get half their proficiency bonus added to their initiative rolls, which is an ability check, but it is not tied to a skill proficiency. Bards will no longer get an initiative bonus from Jack of all trades. Jack of some trades now, <laughs> not so much all trades. That's the other thing is uh, bards used to get a bonus to their counterspell and dispel magic rolls because of Jack of all trades. But now those aren't tied to skill proficiencies. They're just spells. So Jack of all trades will not help with counterspell, dispel magic, or any spell that requires an ability check. Font of in Bardic Inspiration is the same, but it says also says, in addition, if a creature rolls your Bardic Inspiration die and gets a one, after any rerolls you might have, that use of Bardic Inspiration isn't expended. I think they're taking some of the notes from the Eloquence Bard that was so well received because it often didn't waste its Bardic Inspiration if it ended up not helping. 
James Stewart bonus if you only need a one to pass because they still get to use it again. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. So if you're helping an ally, they rolled a 14, but maybe they need a 15 to succeed. You still give them the Bardic Inspiration. And if they roll a one, you still give them a plus one so that they succeed on the roll, <laughs> but you don't lose your Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> that's super funny. I wonder if that's intended. I don't, I don't think they'll change that, but I love that. I did not catch on to that, James. Good catch. Uh, Magical Secrets. This one's going to be controversial for people, especially because we're going to get into the subclass that they do have in this, which is the Lore Bard. But I think this is great. So Magical Secrets allows you to take from any of the Arcane, Divine, or Primal spell list. Whenever you prepare spells for this class, up to two of the spells you prepare can be chosen from the chosen list from any school of magic. So now when a Bard is level 11, when they are preparing their spells, they can pick two spells, any spell, and prepare it. That means you're no longer stuck with just, oh, when I got Magical Secrets, I picked these two spells, so those are my two bonus spells and I'm stuck with them, and that's what I'll always have. But now, just when you long rest and you're preparing your spells, you get two, and if you want to get rid of them, Maybe you, let's say you picked, let's say it's Counterspell and Fireball, and you're doing a social encounter instead. Swap those out for something that is going to help you in a social situation. This is pretty wild, in my opinion. It makes you incredibly flexible between rests to adapt to whatever situation you're in. All right, so um, Superior Bardic Inspiration at level 18 got improved, so you regain two expended uses of Bardic Inspiration every time you roll initiative. College of Lore, Cutting Words can no longer reduce damage. It's just an ability check or an attack roll. Level 6, Cunning Inspiration. Many don't like the loss of Magical Secrets, which was right here, so let's see what we get instead. When any creature rolls your Bardic Inspiration, that creature can roll the die twice and use the higher of the two rolls. So more reliable Bardic Inspiration rolls. 10th level, improved cutting words. Bards used to go, I think, 3, 6, 14 for their subclass features. So they're all going to be getting a 10th level feature now. Improved cutting words. You can deal psychic damage to the creature equal to the number rolled on the Bardic Inspiration die, plus your charisma modifiers. Talk about when you use cutting words. So when you're trying to distract a creature from their attack roll, you can also deal a little bit of psychic damage in there. And then peerless skill. Um, what changes here is if the check still fails, the Bardic Inspiration isn't expended. Again, they're, they're learning that everyone really liked the Eloquence Bard that they released because it didn't waste a lot of Bardic Inspiration. The themes I'm seeing with the Bard here is let's make it easier for characters, especially new players, to not waste their Bardic Inspiration, especially because other new players will forget they even have it. And then let's make it so the feel bad rolls of like ones are not actually helping at certain levels. You still don't lose, you don't lose the resource. So less feel bads there. And I can get behind that.